Alright yeah, guys, welcome to the UK Scale and Crawler video. Um, I, in this video I'm going to show you how to get into the flight controller on the Wakira runner. So you can have a little play about with the settings and stuff and up the rates so it'll pitch more and roll faster and things like that. Um, I'm not massively clued up on what all the stuff does in here because there's loads you can do with it. But I'll show you what program it is you need to download and how you need to or how you can get into it. Um, also, I'm going to show you how to set the fail safe from your radio as well because when the Wokir runner comes, it's not got a fail safe on it as we found out with Luke's um, on the weekend as Luke's decided to fly off. So, <coughs> we've oh, I've now been researching it and found out that it doesn't come with a fail safe. So, I'm going to show you how to set that up as well. Make sure you set it up before you fly. Because otherwise, if it goes out of radio range or you lose it on the FPV and it just flies off, you'll end up sitting there crying. So, yeah, I'll see you in a little minute. I'm just going to fire everything up on a computer and go and get a little stand for my phone. Because I'm going to do this video on my phone, it's just easier. Um, and then, yeah, I'll show you how to do it all. Okay, guys. All right, yeah. guys. Right, well, this is how you need to get into the flight controller. So, what you do is you go onto Google and type in multi wee GUI, which you got up here. Um, once you type that in, you need to go to this second one down. Now, it might be different from wherever you are, so I'll just click on this and then you can get that link up there. And that's what you need to type in on, on say, Google, and then it'll come up with this menu. Um, once it's come up with this menu, it'll come up with loads of different versions of multi -way. Now, the version that is on the Wokira Runner is multi is multi 2.2. So you need to download this, so click that, and then it'll ask you if you want to know where you want to download, so just click in this one here, and that should download it. There we go, it's just showing up on the bottom down here, which is off screen as per usual. Ignore that. Right, once you've downloaded it, you need to extract it. Now you don't need to use WinZip to extract it, or WinRAR, or anything like that all you need to do is you need to go like that and I click your start button and go on to documents or whatever so you can bring up this menu and then go on to downloads and then it'll be somewhere in here so whatever you've downloaded it will be there uh, where are we hold on there we go you have multi wee GUI now because I've downloaded it a couple of times because I didn't think it had it to come up with loads of them, but either way, so grab the WinZip file, drag it out onto your desktop, and click that and exit that. Then you can open that up, highlight everything that's in here. And then Create a new file. Go on to folder, just name it Multiway. Name it Multiway down the bottom. Hang on a minute, just drag that up there so you can see it. And then you just name name your new file Multiway and then over there, highlight the whole lot. You don't need to highlight this top box because that's just the folder that you've opened. And then drag and drop the lot into that file. And it'll do that. Then you can shut that and then you can open up your multiway. Now, once you've opened up multiway, right, you need to scroll down and look for this icon. See if you can zoom in a touch. There we go, that one. One that says application at the end. So you'll double click that. Right, and then it'll then ask you if you want to run, just click yeah. And then with a bit of luck, it should fire up. The computer's running a little bit slow today. Alright, well, I've already installed mine, so it'll come up with this. Go through the installation process. Once you've gone through the installation process, it'll come up and it'll look like that. Now, when you plug in the quad in, in fact, give me one second, I'll just go and get my quad. Oh, yeah. Um, to put the, or to link the quad up, what you need to do is on your quad, you'll see on the flight controller, which is this box here then you've got two ports the little port on this side if we can get it to focus 
Come on. There we go. Well, I didn't get anyway. But yeah, that port there, you need a mini USB cable, which would be that. And you plug that into there, which I think goes in that way up. Let's move these props out of the way. Like so. Now when you've plugged it in, you also need to put a battery in it. Yeah, so you need to plug your battery in the back. Now I wouldn't suggest leaving the props on for doing this because if you haven't done it before, there's a chance the motors might spool up and if they do, it's going to try flying around your living room. So, you bear with us one sec, I'll just go and get a battery in my radio. So, uh, to link it up, yeah, plug, yeah, you need to turn the quad on first, then turn your radio on. Right, and let it all calibrate as it normally would. Then once you've done that, then plug the wire into the into the flight controller, and then it'll then once it's all uploaded and everything, open up the program. And it should say Com Five. It'll have your speed there. Or it'll say I think it'll say Com Five anyway. But then all you do is you just click Connect, which is just here. Um, then from that you can then you can change all your PIDs on everything. Um, you can also make the, the expo for the motors a bit quicker and for your throttle. You can turn up the pitch rates and your rates. Um, you've also got you can make well you can choose what your radio is doing. So where most people when they're arming theirs they have to push this across to arm it. I've changed that now so to arm it and just flick that switch and it'll arm and disarm. Yeah, so not that switch, this switch. The arm and this arm from that switch, and then you've also got on the top. You can change all your switch settings for the top. You can do basically everything you want with the radio. And um, also, as well, incidentally, when you're setting your endpoints up, this will give you a full digital readout of what all your endpoints are doing. So whenever you move the sticks across, as you can see, we're moving now. So that'll tell you what all the sticks are doing on the on your quad and what's happening with it and this, that and the other. Um, let me see, what else can you get into it? And give you full real time data of what everything's doing. So you can check that your accelerometer's working and your gyros are all working. So if you pitch the quad forward, obviously the artificial horizon. Callum, shush. The artificial horizon will go down and come up and It'll also tell you if you're facing north and all that, and you can set everything up. Um, you can also recalibrate the, the accelerometer. Now, I would suggest doing this. Mine flew great, also, I thought, up until I recalibrated the accelerometer. After I recalibrated it, it flew like a totally different aircraft. It's unbelievable the difference it'll make. So, I would suggest doing that. And it gives you a run through steps on how to do it. Um, that doesn't work, that won't work. This will come up with an error code. It's just because the quad doesn't have these features built into it. And then that'll just sit there doing whatever it wants to do. But whenever you, once you've changed whatever settings you want to change, so if you want to make it roll or pitch faster, then turn these up and turn your, or you can leave your yaw rate because the yaw rate's well fast enough anyway, in my opinion. Um, you can also change the throttle PIDs and stuff. You can change everything. Like, so, that's essentially how you do that bit. Now, if you give us a second or so, I'll get my radio and chuck it in front of you and show you how to set the fail safe as well while I'm at it. All right, two more things. Uh, obviously, one of them's a fail safe bit. Second one, uh, if you are changing any of the PIDs or any of the rates or anything, make sure you take pictures first of what they were, just in case you cock it up and it starts flying all funky. Um, so at least you can go back then. And, you know, you're not going to forget where everything was. Right, next bit, fail safe. What you need to do is flick on your radio. Once it decides to load up, I'm going to wait for these to finish doing. I'm doing what they're doing. No, no. Right, press enter, which is this button. It'll start flashing up the top there, as you can see. And use this one to go across the function. Push that button in again. Right, keep scrolling down till you see one that says safe on it. Which is there. So you push enter in. 
Right, then all of these will be on hold. Now, I've had a little fettle with some of these anyway, so right, that one says safe on it, and then it's got right on there, but anyway, you don't need to do that. What you need to do is when you go into this, you click safe, you go down to throttle, then push this button down once it's flashing on hold, which will then go to safe. Right, push your enter button in, then push this one down. Right, and then it'll say left 100 minus 100. Make sure it says left 100, that means shut off. So if the aircraft decides to fly off, if you switch your radio off, it'll automatically cut the motors and drop out the sky. So at least it's not going to go massively far away. It's not going to try and fly a mile up in the sky. So you need to do that. You push your enter button in. And once you push the enter button, it'll just keep flashing. But just click back in. And then there you go. That's your fail safe set. So once again, just to recap, enter, function, scroll down to where it says safe, go into safe, and then when it goes into safe, it will say, that's what it will say. So once it goes, you need to go to throttle, go to safe, and then push this one down. So it says minus 100, well, L100, which is minus 100. Push enter and then push back, 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 back. That's it, done. Fail safe set. So, hope that helps, guys. I um, want to figure out a bit more on what I'm doing and how to do things and you know, maybe tune it slightly better if it needs it. Or I'm going to start flying in rate mode now because I've been speaking to a few people and they've said that control difference is unreal. So, I'm going to start having a little go at trying to learn, and learn to fly in rate mode. Hang on one sec, that's probably a bit better now you can see me. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start learning how to fly in rate mode now, uh, now that I've got fail safe set and stuff. Also, incidentally, if you have a look on eBay, um, there is a device on there, which is a buzzer, which will work off the gear switch on the radio. So if you do ever happen to fly or if like, lose it and it ends up in a bus somewhere, all you literally need to do is you flick that switch down once you've wired it in. It's got a positive negative in the switch wire and it goes into the control board underneath. It's dead easy to do. But you flick that switch and it'll start buzzing and screaming so you can find it. Um, it's like a little tracker basically. So I'm going to be investing in one of them and I'll show you how to fit that and all. But anyway, I hope this video helps because I'm drowning on a little bit now. So I'll see you in a little bit. Um, and yeah, if you get stuck or anything, just leave a comment in the bottom. Or if you do it first time, just leave me a comment. Let me know how easy you found it.